ABC Today. It's Tuesday, March 19th. Great to be with you here on this generally pretty positive trading day, actually, which uh, is a little uncharacteristic because tomorrow we'll conclude the two-day Federal Reserve meeting and they'll set uh, their policy and then talk about uh, you know, forward guidance. And I think what the market will be expecting tomorrow is that obviously it's a it's a hundred percent chance on Fed futures that they're going to keep rates the same. So that part is to be expected, but it'll depend on what they talk about, what the tone of of uh, of, of 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 Jay Powell is in the press conference, and then if the dot plots, if what they're expecting before the end of the year on rates changes from three reductions of twenty five basis points to to maybe two. Um, and again, they're just both the, the, the PPI data, the CPI data, and the PCE data we got for last month was above what was expected. Again, I, uh, it, you know, it, it's not overly bothersome to me. I still think they're getting to where they need to go. It just isn't happening in a straight line. And, and I think that they're well aware of that. But, but that's the big news for tomorrow. But other than that, the day just sort of to melt higher. Um, and so just when I started typing that we were going to have a mixed bag in markets. We ended up having a fairly positive day across the board. S&P, NASDAQ, Dow were all up, and the bond market was also up. Bond prices rallied, and so you got a 10-year yield that dropped about three basis points, closed at 429. Still in that same range I've spoken about, which is about 410 to 435. Um, so we'll see tomorrow. There's definitely a, a news enough with the Fed where rates could could pop higher, depending on what they say. So we'll stay tuned there. Um, other big news on the day was the BOJ, the Bank of Japan, uh, raised interest rates for the first time in 17 years. So the last time that they did this was when George W. Bush was president and the Bourne Ultimatum was in movie theaters, along with another Western that I particularly like called 310 to Yuma that nobody saw, but is a good movie if you want to catch it. Anyways, my point is that was a long time ago. Um, they've been stuck in this sort of deflationary spiral now for decades and decades since really the late 80s. And uh, this is, you know, uh, uh, historical, I guess, because they're going from uh, negative rates into f positive territory, a full, you know, zero to 0.1 percent is their central bank uh, policy rate. And I said, basically, you know, it's when it's a bold thing to do, but when you get close to a three times um, uh, GDP and government debt, I suppose. It's time for some monetary uh, responsibility, I suppose. Um, housing starts for the day were up 10.6%, which was much stronger than expected. We had a weaker number in January, though, based on just weather. Um, and so read into that what it is. It's positive that we're getting good data on housing. Uh, Resi was up 11.6 and multifamily was up 8.3. Uh, permits, which we look at as more forward-looking um, indicator, were up about 2%, a little less uh, as well. So again, broad-based and um, a foreshadowing to uh, what, what I'll ultimately add in an Ask Brian section in the next DC Today or, or maybe the one following on, uh, on housing is how this country is just underbuilt. We're undersupplied in housing. We're forming more households every year than we're replacing with new builds. And so eventually that uh, 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 results in, in a shortage of housing. That's what we're dealing with. Um, again, the, the Fed is tomorrow. Um, there was an Ask Brian section today about taxable municipal bonds. Um, it's, it's not a very big market, this taxable muni space. Um, if people remember in 2009, there was something called Build America Bonds. This was coming out of the GFC and federal government trying to subsidize the states to issue some debt by covering a third of the interest expense, if you remember that. But those were taxable munis. If I remember they were in the six and, and almost 7% coupon range. Um, I think they traded above par. But all that to say, the question was, can you put this stuff in an IRA? You can. I mean, it's just like any other taxable bond. Um, we don't do it, but that doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't make sense financially. Uh, but my comment was because the inventory is so small in the world. Um, in other words, if you go to Schwab or Fidelity or something and try to go find taxable munis, you can find them, but they will be odd lots and they'll be here and there. And it's just, there's not a lot of inventory. And so people will buy an ETF of them 
And I just, you know, I just don't think buying an ETF of fixed income is a great idea. So I'm not a fan. So that was my comment to this person. It was a good question. Um, and uh, there's nothing wrong with taxable munis inside an IRA. Uh, tax-free munis in an IRA would be, uh, would be a bad thing, right? Tax, tax-free interest in a tax shelter wouldn't make sense. But um, hopefully you got some education there. And again, I'll be with you tomorrow, uh, which will be Wednesday. And in the meantime, I wish you all a lovely evening and I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.